Hey, well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time of day it is where you live. Yes, I hope you're having a wonderful time. I've been asked a little bit about some functions of Reaper that I'm trying to cover for a new friend of mine. I hope my videos have been helpful. It sounds like you've uh, learned a little bit from them. I'm um, going to go over to my Reaper project now. And here I have my vocal that I'm speaking into. I have a typical... Uh, processing on the input so that it sounds okay. And on my uh, guitar track here, I'm going to record a little bit of guitar. And <clears throat> I'm going to be very specific about this today. Um, I do know music theory. I know all of my modes. And what I'm going to do is play a uh, lick or a scale. It might seem a bit boring, but we'll play a scale and record the scale using the uh, D mixolydian mode, uh, which is the Ionian mode with a dominant seventh in it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> push record, and it's going to record my voice along with it. We'll delete that when I'm done. Here we go. Uh, D mixolydian. There we go. So I've got a click. <laughs> Okay, there's a riff written in Demixolydian, and if you know anything about music theory, you'll realize that I hit an incorrect note while playing that. Now, on my guitar channel, um, I have my uh, guitar amp archetype uh, Gojira, which is really awesome, but I have also added Repitch and Retune. We're going to discuss and work with both of those today. Uh, let's go to uh, repitch. The effect is off right now and everything is at zero. You can't use this effect while you're tracking. It just does not work. Um, it creates latency. Both of these effects, if you're recording, create latency. They must be used post-processing. I have not yet found a way to make them work without latency. So um, I can't help you with that. However, the functions of uh, repitch, we will go from here to here. We're going to hit the loop button so that we can listen to this over and over and over again. And I might have to turn this channel down, so let's listen to what it sounds like. We're going to turn repitch on, and we have no effect going. And works great. There it is, back in normal. Let's shift the uh, semitones. Uh, let's go one semitone. And now, let's go two. Let's go three. Let's go back to zero. It just simply shifts one half step with each, um, with each move of the uh, button. We can increase that. Um, uh, a full octave. We can move it uh, 11 half steps. So now we're in C sharp. We can move it down a half step again and be in C. And the latency is absolutely obvious. Okay, that's semitones. Synths are a portion of a tone, so if we push play. These are just very... The uh, shift in sense uh, is a very subtle, small movement. If you're going to pitch correct something by that's just ever so slightly out of tune, um, you move it in sense. Uh, the full range semitones, I cannot recall. Let's see what this does. Okay, so this allows you to use uh, decimals in respect to the uh, semitones. So you can do 1.78 uh, semitones with this. 
shift octaves. Well, obviously. Yeah, octaves. Are we... Now we have a bass. Okay, we've heard that enough. So ultimately, really, that is all that repitch is doing. I don't use this very often, although I did recently on a project to lower the pitch of a clav, a wood block that, or a clav, uh, that was just too high. Uh, and I wanted to shift the pitch of it down because it fit the mix a lot better. The, the, the tonal qualities of it at a lower pitch were much nicer. So that's what I did with repitch effect. Okay, retune. All right, let's look at retune. Uh, let's look at the effect. Here it is. And again, I, I stated that I'm, I'm soloing or I'm playing a riff in D. And we're going to go to Mixolydian because that's the mode that I'm playing on. And uh, the attack time down here kind of helps with the share effect or allows the, the pitch shift to be actually very audible or very inaudible. And typically what I do when I open this, because I don't want people to hear that I'm, I don't use pitch shifting as an effect. I use it to correct a bad note in a, in a piece of music, either it be a vocal or uh, once in a while a guitar or something like that, where I've just nailed everything and it was a great performance. Uh, I, I don't use this often. So I usually make this number 100, just highlight it. I don't usually mess with these down here and um, also pay close attention to stereo correction. Not that it does a lot, but we're not correcting a stereo file. This is a mono guitar track right there. Okay, so if you're using retune on a track, uh, you wanna make sure as to whether or not it's stereo or uh, mono, that's important. So we have our auto uh, corrections are set to automatic pitch correct. We have it set to demixolydian. And there is one bad note. Uh, let's see, where is that? Let me turn this effect off. We'll listen to the bad note. I will point it out. We'll put a marker on it. That note right there. We're going to put a marker, insert new marker, bad note. We'll just call it bad. There we go. We're going to listen to this with and without the pitch correct. So we're going to start it at the beginning. We'll listen to it without, and then I'll turn the effect on. Here we go. D mixolydian, yay. Sounds like a scale, right? All right. Every other note. I just took a bad note and bent it into pitch with auto pitch correct. Okay, now let's uh, attack time. Let's make it uh, 10. We've, we've shortened the attack time. And the readout is showing you the correction it's doing. Ooh. Whoa, whoa, and without the effect? Okay. Now again, that note was an intentional, the uh, weird note. Here we go, one more time with the pitch correct working. Uh, so there's retune. Uh, you can do that same exact process on a vocal line that you've missed a note on. And here we go one more time with the uh, retune on it. We're going to go to correction and we're going to watch this little line down here do what it's doing. You can see that it's correcting every note when I got to that G string. So, retune. Uh, with respect to being a, an amazing uh, pitch corrector, 
Uh, it does a really magnificent job. Now, what you may notice here is that uh, this little section in here, you need to know the key of your song, and it helps to know the mode that the song is written in. I realize that not everybody has a uh, degree in music theory. This is something that's very important to know. You can go in and do manual correction. Good luck with that. I know guys that are spending hours correcting vocals uh, on songs recorded by amateur um, singers uh, who don't pay close attention to pitch, and they have to pitch correct a lot. So the retune uh, for... Uh, solving problems where your vocal performance isn't that great is a really wonderful tool. It, uh, I don't use it a lot, again, because I take the time to make sure that what I sing is in pitch and my guitar is in tune when I record, like I didn't do today. I do use it once in a while um, where I just don't feel that my performance was that great. If you hit a bad note like I did right here, oh boy, it's right now. And if it's not corrected, it is corrected to demixolydian. There's retune for you and repitch uh, in a nutshell. I hope this uh, video helps you. Be sure to hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. You get a note when I put up a new song or a new video of any sort of guitar repair. Who knows what I'll do next? Good grief. I might go mow the lawn. Peace, y'all.